So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how you're going to build your profitable web design business. Now this comes in a few steps. I'm going to tell you what the steps are. We're basically, we're going to cover every important aspect of having a business, owning, managing a business in order, starting from the most basic. So let's just go from the beginning. Here's the, all the levels for your new complete and profitable business. We start with the absolute basics. What you are and what you are in the market. This is brand and position. I'll explain those in a minute. We move on to marketing. Marketing is how you reach your market. We'll have a look at the offerings. What do you actually offer? Is it a service package? Is it fixed price? There's so many different choices out there and the choices that you make can significantly affect your profitability. We can look at sales, how to sell, what sales actually means, how to do it the right way. Look at contracts and structuring projects, really, really important for profitability on all kinds of levels. And we've got some insights in that as well. All of this in the context of the 80-20 rule and the things that we were talking about in the initial video. We'll look at delivery. How do you deliver projects? How do you manage it effectively so that everyone's happy, everyone gets paid? Item number seven, getting paid. <laughs> One of the our favorite bits in the whole process, right? But not always as straightforward as you might think. And the eighth video, we'll look at customer service. And then looking at repeat business. And finally, boosting profitability. There are probably several smart things that you could be doing which will help you to get more business with less work and less selling and make more money over time than you may even be thinking about now so let's just talk about each one of these in turn we'll start with brand and position so the brand really means this is what you mean to the world and and very briefly position means when people think business web designer or whatever it is, where do you fit in their mind? Do you have an actual position in people's minds? And very much this is about, first of all, choosing what you want to be. What kind of work do you want to do? There's no point doing work that isn't going to be profitable because that's not a business. There's no point doing work that you hate because you're not going to be very good at it. Even if you've got certain skills, if you don't like something, and it's not going to get you out of bed in the morning, you shouldn't be doing that. So we'll spend some time identifying what the criteria are for your ideal type of work. And we'll think really broadly about what it is that you might do to serve the world. We'll talk about why it's important to specialize. I'm a big believer in finding your niche, in being the person in that niche. Because bottom line, guys, if you have a niche, you can be a lot more profitable. You can charge more. You've got to specialize. If you're in the business of designing websites, how many websites get built a year? How many clients and companies commission websites to be built every year? It's got to be millions and millions and millions, right? So there's no point addressing that whole market. There's no point joining all the other generic web designers out there and saying, hi, I'm another generic web designer. No, what you need to do is say, I am the person for this. If you want this, I'm the person for that. Now, let's say that limits you to a subset of the market, a niche of just a thousand clients, but a thousand clients who want exactly what you offer. And then if you are the person for that and five of those clients a year hire you, but they pay top dollar. Isn't that so much easier than saying, I'm a general purpose web designer, come to me, I'll build you a website. I'll show you why it's so much easier and so much more profitable. We'll really nail to the desk who you are. And that means who you are to the world. What do you represent to people? So we'll look at your stand. This is what I stand for. This is what I believe in. This is my mission, what I'm trying to achieve. It's important to tell your story as well, because when people hire you, they're not just hiring a set of services or a product package. They, they're hiring somebody that they're going to have a relationship with in the sense that you're helping to represent them to the world. So it's good for people to understand who you are and where you've come from. 
And of course, when we're thinking 80-20, we've got to be using our special power. So you've got to acknowledge what your special powers are so that you can use them. And then we'll finally get on to what you actually deliver. And if you remember back to the previous video, it's really important to focus on the results that you deliver, not the activity. Okay, we're thinking strategic. Strategy is where do we want to get to rather than tactical, how are we going to get there? So in sales, it's very important to sell your prospects goals. Sell them what they really ultimately want, which isn't a website. A website is a means to an end. So we need to extend that into the, the area of who you are and what you stand for. What do you deliver? What are you about? And as I briefly mentioned, we're going to cover position, which means where you belong in the market. Where are you relative to other offerings that may be out there? Second step is marketing. Now, in its purest form, what marketing really means is identifying and reaching markets or even developing markets. So there's really two ways of going about this. One is to say, this is the thing that I want to sell, maybe a product or a service, and then going out to find a market for that product if it exists. There's a little bit of wishful thinking in there. The ideal one, and this is the root of the entrepreneur, is to say, let's look around for a tribe that isn't being served in some way, and let's serve that need. So on the day-to-day -day level, marketing is really about generating leads. How are you going to get your message out into the world so that people can contact you and say, please, will you work for us? We're going to look at different ways of generating leads. Active could be stuff like cold calling, networking, getting out there, shaking hands. Can be okay, can work. Ideally, though, we want to be looking at passive lead generation. We want to look at setting up a system that is going to reach enough people and convince enough people that they want to get in touch with you, that this stuff just happens pretty much automatically. The 80-20 approach has got a lot to say about that. We'll look at growing your own leads. How you can create a following and develop that following and train them until they get to the point where they need to hire you. And to do that with a minimum possible work. How about getting other people to market you? So we'll look at strategic partnerships, how you can persuade and make it worthwhile, make it a win-win for others to go out there into the marketplace and to promote you. And also as another idea, we'll look at publishing. Publishing books can actually be very effective. And there are tools out today that will help you to publish eBooks and Kindle books and reach a good market in a very, very effective way. Lots of people have done this to uh, very great effect. In the third video, we're going to look at your offerings, which boils down to what kind of packages are you going to offer? Is it consulting at an hourly rate? Is it a basic website starter pack? Or anything in between? There are so many options out there. Obviously, the bottom line is we want to deliver high value and we want to do that in return for high revenue. So you don't want to be offering packages that are kind of the same as everyone else. That's not what specializing is about. That's what it's not what being a niche marketer is about. You want to deliver the highest value that you can add in return for the highest revenue. So we'll look at should we be offering standard packages or custom packages? How about naming your offerings? Even simple choices like choosing to name it after the thing that you're doing, the activity, the process, can be very different and have a very different psychological impact than, for example, naming it after the goal, the ultimate thing that you're going to deliver, the result, the benefits. And of course, pricing is hugely, hugely important when we're thinking about profitability. Video four is all about sales. We're going to ask what sales is. I think a lot of us have got a false perception about sales and selling. We think about greasy salespeople who don't care, who are just trying to persuade you to do something you don't want to do. Now, to me, that is not what sales is about at all. So we're going to try and overturn and dispel that whole idea. At the same time, we need to overcome any fear of selling that you may have. And I've got a way of taking you through that. We'll look at applying 80-20 to the time that you spend selling. The time that you spend selling will follow the 80-20 curve. Most of it will be time wasted. Some of it will be highly effective. 
What we want to do is maximise the effective time, make it even more effective and reduce, minimise the hours that you spend that aren't likely to produce results. And then ultimately the goal of all of this is to develop a system that's going to get you more good clients more of the time and discourage the wrong prospects all with a minimum amount of work really. Video 5 we're going to talk about contracts and project structure. How to formalize your relationship with your client in a way that protects you, protects your revenue and keeps everybody happy. The contracts are absolutely critical. It's a rare situation when you can get away with not having any kind of contract at all. I'm going to show you how contracts can actually positively attract and keep the right clients and also repel the wrong ones. We'll look at, we're going to look at ideas for structuring projects to reduce your risk, bring it down as far as possible and also increase your profits just through the way that you go about delivering what you deliver. I'm going to give you a sample contract. We're going to put together all these clauses and phrases which you can then pick and choose from. You'll have this as a template that you can then use to create your own contracts. Video six will be on delivery, actually delivering the work that you do, whatever it is, products and services. Whatever you give your clients, you want to do it in a dependable, regular, reliable and safe way. Managing your clients' expectations is gonna be absolutely critical throughout this whole process. We'll talk about the importance of under-promising and over-delivering as pertains to managing your client's expectations. Obviously, we're going to apply the 80-20 rule to everything that you do in delivery because you want to do it as efficiently as possible. But it's also absolutely critical to delight your clients if they're a good client. If they're a bad client, it's okay to piss them off and it's okay to lose them. But if they're a good client, you want to delight them. The best advert for your business is a happy, satisfied, delighted client. The worst possible advert for your business is a client that you let down. And we'll think about outsourcing, how you can use other people's skills and talents more cost effectively than doing all the work yourself. And we'll cover the fundamentals of project management as well. All that's in video six. Video seven, getting paid. This is why we're all doing it, right? We're going to look at the 80-20 of money. Payment structures are absolutely critical because you need to time the delivery, the things that you deliver, with the payment. If you get paid too much too soon, that can actually be under-motivating. If, if you do all this work and deliver all this work and the prospect of maybe getting paid or maybe not getting paid at the end of a project, that is very high risk as well. You don't want to be in that situation. So what we need to do is we need to find a balance that is going to suit you and suit your client, keep everybody interested and keep everybody motivated. And ultimately, this is one of the most important things. You've got to ensure that you get paid and your contracts are going to be very important there. Controlling ownership is a very, very useful method of managing payment. So we might have contracts that say that the client doesn't actually own any creative work, design work that you show them until they've paid a certain point. They don't own the website until they've paid to a certain point. And we'll ask what can you do if or when clients don't pay, which is a situation obviously that you want to avoid. And we'll cover also some case studies, some real life stories from the front line of how people have managed to get paid consistently and regularly, and maybe some where they haven't. Video eight, we're going to talk about customer service, the 80-20 of customer service. What that really means is keeping your customers happy with less time. What are the things that actually matter for keeping your customers happy and maybe what are the things that we might be spending our time doing busily that don't really make a big difference. 
Maintaining clarity is extremely important, both throughout a project, before and after all stage in your communications with your prospects and clients, you want absolutely everything to be clear. Managing client expectations, we've already mentioned that. This is extremely important because whether things are going right or whether things are going wrong, if you manage your client's expectations skillfully and appropriately, it's possible to maintain their trust and to keep them engaged with the project and keep them happy and for them and you all to get a successful outcome. And another part of this, of course, is going to be protecting your time. You can't be running an efficient business if you're getting constant interruptions and breaking up your productive time with things like customer service. So we'll cover that as well. In video nine, we'll be talking about repeat business. This really should be music to your ears as a business owner. This is one of the Repeat business, in a way, is, is kind of the peak of 80-20 selling. This is really how you can keep selling without even having to sell. How can you spend an hour or two, just a few hours, setting something up that is going to get you revenue month after month after month, maybe even year after year? Passive revenue, obviously, is highly desirable. Because passive revenue comes in even if you stop cranking the, the handle on the machine, right? And it's one of the big downsides of a service-based business, where if you stop providing service, the money stops coming in. And we'll look at ways of actually working around that. So we'll have some concrete suggestions, some ideas for how you might be able to build ongoing revenue. There are some services, of course, that more naturally fit an ongoing revenue model. Search engine optimization, for example, pay-per-click management, conversion improvement, and also services where you're really just kind of providing some security, some backup. So that your clients know that even if they don't use your time, that you're there and you're available and you're providing something that is going to prevent or ensure against something kind of bad happening. And that really falls into this category of what I call gym offerings. So if you've ever had a gym membership like, like I do right now, where I haven't been down for months and my family hasn't been down for months, but I still pay it every month, it's a great situation to be in. Then finally, last video, we're going to crank it up. We're going to take it to the next level and the next level beyond that, we're going to look at boosting your profitability, how you can move up the food chain. And we'll look at 8020 squared and 8020 cubed and what that might look like for your business. And I just want to leave you with this thought that there is a finite limit to time. When you're in the service business, there are only two major factors that are going to control your revenue. And that is the number of hours that you can deliver multiplied by the rate that you can charge for those hours. Now, the time cannot be multiplied. The rate can increase, right? There's, there's generally there's generally going to be a market rate for a web designer, a market rate for a pay-per-click consultant. But think about it this way. The rate that you can charge is going to be proportional to the benefits or the perceived benefits that you deliver. Therefore, if you were to create a website or you were to improve the conversion rate of a website or you were to run a pay-per-click campaign for a website let's say you do it for a small website and that website generates ten thousand dollars of profit a month that's that's all well and good but what if that website was a hundred times bigger and that and so say you know same kind of field you could have a website that's generating a million dollars a month right now there's no great difference in the type of work that you would do to publish it to improve its conversion rate or to manage its pay-per-click you know the scale of the budget isn't really much of a factor when it comes to the hours that you spend and what you do with those hours so moving up the food chain to a great degree is about how you can identify sell and then serve those clients that are just playing a bigger game with bigger budgets, which means that you can deliver bigger benefits, which means that you can then charge higher fees, 
and get more profit. So that's the overview. 10 more videos to come, plus a few more assets and lots of case studies. So I'll see you in the next video.